it's just okay we're recording, we're recording now, now. Okay, <laughs> hello <laughs> welcome to number two podcast we have scott kennedy and various others in the room um we'll hello. see we'll see how it goes there he is he's drinking wine i do um i love how i've written why the hell are you here what the hell do you want and how was dinner <laughs> wow <laughs> Should we break those down into one at a time? Or just How like, was dinner? One at a time. <laughs> well done. Yes. I'll give you some money later. Excellent. Yes. Yes. Um, so, I guess for me, I I remember two... I've been here eight years, and I remember... A, what, how long... How old's Twitter? Six, seven years old? Yeah, I think so. About, yeah, probably about six or seven years old. I remember seeing you on Twitter and thinking, who the hell's this guy? I don't know why. I think there was the Lonely Planet thing. Yeah. A lot of people have had that sort of, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. And then you that. disappeared off the radar, um, and then you came back again. Yeah. Um, I got bored of Twitter for a while. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, so, why the hell are you here? So, you can give us, I know you're a you're a Canadian. Mm-hmm. I've got that right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, why am I here? Why am I in Queenstown? Yes. Why am I in Queenstown? Well, okay. Uh, well, I've been in Queenstown now for, like... 12 years, I think, so, I arrived, um, we arrived, I arrived with my girlfriend at the time and wife now, uh, in, in New Zealand in 2001, and we moved from Canada where I was born and grew up and all that, um, and we moved to Wanaka for a year, and then after a year we moved from Wanaka to Queenstown because Queenstown was just way cooler and yeah. Fittest. Oh, controversial. Oh, no, controversy. What, what are we? We're <laughs> a minute, minute 40. forty in. I already <laughs> dropped the W word. Um, uh, yeah, we 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 loved Wanaka, but um, there was a lot more career opportunities, and and it was a uh, a better, a very well rounded international community in Queenstown. So good we, save there. Good yes, save. I know. Yes. So we felt at home uh, very quickly in Queenstown. Um, so that's that's sort of what brought us here. We never really intended to stay, but like so many people, we just never found a reason to leave. Just, yeah. Just really fell in love with the place, and um, it feels like Queenstown's continually gotten better the whole time we've been here. Yeah. And where, why, what did you want from the place? Did you have an idea of what you wanted? Did you come with uh, some some skills or a reason for working here? Or Yeah, well, I guess, you know... When I moved here, I was working as a freelance writer and a photographer, um, and most of my work, especially at that time, was sort of outdoor adventure things. Like I was, I was doing ski photography and rock climbing photography, and and writing about rock climbing and that sort of stuff. So I thought of Queenstown as this great venue of a place to live, where I could meet lots of people who were doing that sort of stuff. So I'd meet meet friends and meet people I could write about and take pictures of. Yeah. So that was the reason why I sort of arrived here. I didn't really realize there was this a lot, a lot of these other cool aspects to town. So that t- okay. took a while to kind of realize that. Yeah. So that's what brought me in the first place. Yeah. And then the work that you were doing at home, you mm-hmm. wanted to continue here. Yeah. How easy was that or how hard was that? Um, well, that's interesting because I was doing that sort of work back in Canada um, and it was really hard there um, because it was a really competitive market yeah. with, because um, especially I was trying to write for American magazines and stuff like that, and that was really competitive. Um, but I, I was really lucky. Um, sort of about a year before I came to New Zealand, I I worked. I got an internship from an American ski magazine called Powder Magazine, and I moved to California for about six months, three or four months, something like that. A long time ago now. Um, and that was this great sort of leg up in the industry. Um, and all this, I met all these people, and 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 doors started opening for me. Um, so it was, it was a real challenge to come to New Zealand because it was kind of starting all over again. Yeah. I didn't know anybody at mm-hmm. all. We, we knew like one person in all of New Zealand and after two months of living here, they moved away. So it was, it was literally like starting from scratch. Um, so it was a real, it was a real challenge in a lot of ways, but I was, you know, I, I thought I knew what I was doing. I was fairly confident, um, <laughs> and I, I had this thing where it's like I could I could send pictures of New Zealand back to Canada, and they were really exotic. Yeah. So I kept a lot of those connections from back there. Yeah. And that sort of worked for a while until I felt my feet here. Yeah. And then doors started opening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Slowly but surely. Yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a long process, um, and I think 
you know, a decade ago, New Zealand was much smaller. Yeah. Everything was just smaller and industry was smaller and um, there's less of a market for things, but it was easier to kind of know more people. Yeah. So to me, you have still got your fingers in many pies. Mm. Um, Adventure Scope is something that comes up. Mm -hmm. um, is that the one thing that you work under or do you, are you Scott Kennedy? Yeah. AKA Superman <laughs> of another day. No. Um, <laughs> well, it's funny cause I, shortly after I came to New Zealand, I, I realized I needed to kind of like get my, get my business under one umbrella. Yeah. And, uh, my company is called AdventureScope, and that that comes from a really pragmatic reason, and that's because I tried to get ScottKennedy.com, and it was taken. Okay, damn. It was taken. There's a, there's a guy in like Maine or Massachusetts or one of those sorts of places, and he paints pictures of ships, like old um, Spanish galleons, and his name is Scott Kennedy. We could find him. We could I'd, get rid of him. Yeah. If we, if we could take that guy out, that would be great. He's been the bane of my internet existence for since the internet started. Um, so I had this this dilemma. It's like, well, I can't have scottkennedy.com, so what am I going to do? I'm like, well, I'll, I'll just make up a company name. And I thought, oh, well, I'll make up this company name called AdventureScope. And uh, uh, I just went under that. And then that sort of started everything, and then Twitter handles and all that sort of stuff came yeah. from that. Um, so that's sort of the... The company that I do my, because I, I sort of, I work as a, a photographer and a writer and a filmmaker now as well, and that all sort of falls under that company name, but um, yeah, I'm really busy with lots of projects. Yeah, yeah, we, we can see that, driving around in Ferraris, <laughs> pretending to be James Bond, yes. that kind of thing. All in a day's it's just work. normal. It's just an average week. Just an average week. Yeah. So do you, when you first got here, were you, because I think for me, a thing is, um, I find, I struggle quite a lot with is approaching people. Uh -huh. Not to 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 the, for the free stuff, yeah. you know. Like people love that, and that's fair enough. It's actually approaching people and saying, "Hey, will you give me a chance and and actually pay me for it?" Mm. So when you first got here, mm -hmm. was that something you did, or did you have people actually approach you for work? Um, it was at, at first. It was it was like a hundred percent me approaching other yeah. people and saying, "Hey, can I can I do this for you? Can I can I?" Can I send you some of my writing? Can I send you some pictures? Um, and just, and it wasn't even sort of, can I send you some writing and, and you publish it in your magazine? It was just, can I send you some writing and you tell me what you think of yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it was like all these little s steps of small victories because I remember just being like so psyched when people would return my email. Yeah. It was just like, oh, they, they're not just, I'm not going in some spam filter. They're yeah. actually listening yeah. to me. Um, and then the next step was like, oh, they gave me some advice about something and then the next step is like oh we'll run this you can write a little tiny tiny article um so it's all these little incremental steps um and so for a long long time it was just me sending stuff to people and saying hey could you would you think about publishing this and then it became me sending ideas to people and saying hey could i write a story about this or yeah. like that and then eventually became those people contacting me and saying scott could you write a story about this or yeah that? and and then it eventuated into scott what would you like to write? Yeah. Um, so it's it's been an interesting journey, and there's still lots of um, lots of give and take in that. There's still lots of people that I, I talk to that maybe I haven't worked with before, and it's still kind of you know, hi, I'm Scott. This is what I do. Here's examples of what I do. Yeah. So it's it it it's never really sort of this big arrival thing. It's this big timeline of totally. And the process for for me is the important bit, and the bit you try and get through the quickest mm. because you want to arrive at the yeah. Star studded moment and you and it you forget that all the all the stuff is actually really important and where you adapt and grow and Absolutely. learn and Absolutely. I mean that's the fun part. That's yeah. that's why people get into writing and all that sort of stuff from the from the get go is like yeah. the process of writing is fun and the process of that creativity is fun. The 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 pragmatic emails and working for this person or that person, that's that's boring. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. It's it's just a means to get to write. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I still love. Totally. Um, I've put here Canada slash Queenstown um, similarities and differences. Mm, that's an I'm not a big. Uh, my sister lived in Montreal, so that's yeah. the only Canada I know. Right. Well, Montreal is quite different from Queenstown. Yeah. Um, I I grew up in Calgary, which is in western-ish Canada, mm -hmm. sort of in the mountains in the western end of the country, um, and there's. 
there's a lot of similarities to that part of the world to Queens Hill. Um, there's a town that I spent a lot of time in, about 40 minutes from where I grew up, called Banff. Yeah. Um, which is very similar to Queens Hill. Yeah. It's a tourist town in the mountains. Um, and when when I first came to Queenstown, I, I felt immediately very comfortable here because of that, because it just felt yeah. really familiar. Um, and I think I think New Zealand and Canada are very similar, um, almost more so because of who our neighbors are. Because in Canada, we've got this big loudmouth neighbor um, that's near us. I, I don't know. It's called like something United States or something. Something oh, like yeah. that. Something like that. <laughs> makes uh, a little bit of noise every now and again. Makes a little bit of noise. And uh, and New Zealand has a very loud neighbour as well. <laughs> uh, we are getting controversial. We're getting uh, first one. In Goldfield Heights, I won't say our address like last time. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll have hordes of people at the door. Right. We'll be here with the pitchforks. <laughs> yeah, and, so on. And torches. Um, yeah. So I think because of that, um, you know, New Zealand and Canada are very similar. Yeah ideologically places they're, they're like the little brother country that's trying to try to make it on their own yeah. sort of the smaller place so there's a there's a similar sense of humor there's a similar uh view on the world there's a similar sort of laid-back feeling um so i i've from literally the first day i've, I've felt very at home yeah um i've put what do you what do you miss do i miss miss about canada um what's that Maybe. Oh yes, uh, decent macaroni and cheese. Okay, um, not a big thing in my world. No, um, you you may or may not be able to hear in the podcast that it's pouring rain outside. It is it's beautiful. Um, what I miss about Canada, Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons, and no, what I miss is snow. <laughs> is really good snow. Yeah. Because I, the the, if I can pick one thing that's that's changed the course of my entire life is skiing. Yeah. Um, I got into all the different <laughs> things I do for the art and work and all that through skiing yeah so i i miss the really great skiing yeah um i miss that I'm, i miss i miss seeing ice hockey in the sports news every night um that sort of stuff i don't miss being cold no yeah. no central heating central, yeah. all is forgiven yeah. um all right then what would you miss what would i miss if you left here oh um what would i miss i think I think one of the things I really love about Queenstown right now, or what it's becoming, is there's this real sense of potential. There's this Queenstown. It's like it's on the verge of something. It's on the verge. Yeah. It's growing. It's changing. It's it's evolving in these really exciting ways. Um, and I think what I would miss is that the places that I could possibly go to after Queenstown will be a bit more established than this okay. and they've gone through that yeah, yeah. that growth period and they're sort of comfortable into the next stage I'd really miss the dynamic fun thing where it feels like everyday things are evolving yeah. and changing so I'd miss that I miss the view yes I mean it's just every day it's very beautiful <laughs> um, so I've put um, your average week ha 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 but <laughs> I guess you don't have one really do you I, I try and have an average week mm -hmm. um, because I work for myself yeah. most of the time. I mean, I do a bunch of bunch of things, but for the most part, working for myself. Um, I try and add structure into it because if I don't add structure into it, it, it gets really weird and yeah. and all that. So I, you know, I, I have I have things set out at certain times that kind of make it make it a bit more structured. But you know, like. Last week I was shooting video, I was filming a promotional video for a couple of days, and then I'd be editing video, and I'd be writing articles for different magazines, and, um, you know, with um, editing the Source magazine, there's lots of work to do with that and stuff, so it's, I think it's one of the things I really love about what I do, is that there really isn't an average week. No. It's different all the time, yeah. and it's, I, I think it's the thing I love the most about working for myself, is, is waking up in the morning. And sitting having a coffee and being like, right, what's today going to yeah. be? It's different. Every, every day is yeah, completely yeah. different. Yeah. Because I, I read, there was a thing on somebody put on Facebook about the 9 to 5. Did you see that Jim Carrey thing? So Jim Carrey did a speech at some graduation yeah. and said basically the 9 to 5 is supposed to be the sensible um, kind of safe option. But yeah. actually it's not anymore. Yeah. And you rely on somebody else's way of... The world turning over. 
But actually, the nine to five is not the way people work anymore. No. And I don't think it should be. It's like, I don't think schools should be nine to three. They should exist, mm. you know. And obviously, you have to have, you have to know when things are open mm. and blah, blah. But I think people work better yeah. not in a nine to five. I definitely don't work be- good in a nine to five. Well, I think that the people that, there's so many people I know who, who, started careers not not nine to five but five to nine and said like right <laughs> yeah. this is this isn't what I do to, to pay the rent or buy groceries but this is what I really want to do and they 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 find hours in the day to do these cool things and eventually they they do it long enough and they, they make enough contacts and they get skilled enough they're like right that's now gonna be nine yeah. to five. But the reality of a lot of those jobs that, that are that take passion to do is it's not nine to five. No. It's kind of you know, as long as you let yourself do it. Um, and, I, you know, I have a huge amount of respect for that for people who are happy just to keep on working. Yeah. Because um, it, it takes that sort of dedication to to make these unorthodox careers work. And pay the bills. And pay the bills. Which is what we talked about in the first podcast. You know, Dugold has got this amazing passion, but he's got to pay his rent. Mm. So he has to do the boring stuff. It's it's the hardest thing because it's like so many of these these sort of you know quote unquote passion projects take fifty sixty hours a week, yeah. but that doesn't leave any time to to earn earn money. Yeah. Um, if the if the projects aren't paying, it's paying for it yet. So it's like this horrible chicken and egg, where it's like I think eventually you kind of have to just go all in and be like, right, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. I'm just going to figure it out. Yeah. Um. Do you how of poor how do you see queenstown progressing in terms of creativity and the masses of people who want to live here like mm. how will it cope mm. with that because it could come become it could become stagnant in its yeah. own creativity because of the amount of yeah people who want to be here i think i think there's there's two really interesting issues there and and one issue is that um, so many people want to come and live in Queenstown um, that there's a real risk that it could become very gentrified yeah. where um, only very wealthy people can afford to come here and the the traditional sort of, not the patrons, but the people that create the arts will get pushed out yeah. at the bottom and there won't be, won't be places for young musicians or photographers or artists or all those types of people to live here. Um, so at times I, I worry about the future of, of arts and culture in Queenstown because if there isn't room for artists, then who's going to create it? Yeah. But at the same time, there's this huge groundswell of of the that art scene growing and prospering, and more and more artists are moving to this town because of that. Um, you know, musicians are seeing it as a viable place to stay rather than like just saying, okay, well I have to move to Wellington or yeah. I have to move to to Auckland. Um, there's enough of a, a scene happening that it's it's becoming self seeding. So I think there's there's two two cultures, you know, potentially, you know, heading towards each other. Um, and it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. And I think, you know, as Queenstown grows, inevitably it's gonna grow. It's always gonna grow. Um, because the word is out that this place is amazing. Yeah. Um and, and I think how that growth is managed both from like a physical like where are they going to live but also what is the the cultural future of Queenstown look like mm. I mean that's a really interesting idea and I don't think any of us have any control over that it's just going to happen organically the way it's going to happen yeah absolutely because it's really nice at the minute I'm still explaining to some people I meet about what a blog is mm. you know and then if I went and if I went to I don't know I went to London that it, at two completely different places but still it I'm still explaining what some media social media is to people yeah and it's really nice because yeah it's like i'm not wrestling for time with another person who wants to interview somebody else you know yeah. that kind of thing it's, it's funny because for for <laughs> such a long time queenstown was like this one track thing where it was just like you if you lived in queenstown you were into the outdoors and you're into that sort of stuff and, and that's it yeah um but the, and there wasn't this sort of cultural stuff going on and there wasn't technology there wasn't there wasn't blogs there wasn't podcasts there wasn't that sort of stuff happening um but as as queenstown's growing and evolving into a more sort of well-rounded community the stuff is is bubbling up from the cracks from all over the place yeah and it's like 
it's like this cultural revolution almost because it's like there's arts happening and there's people covering the arts and it's like there's people who have stuff to say and there's podcasts for them to say it on and it's like it's really cool that it's all happening at once yeah. you know it's not like there was one without the other it's kind of all happening you know it feels like springtime like all the flowers are just yeah, yeah. At once. yeah definitely it's cool very cool so um if you weren't doing this now what would you be doing the podcast? No, or, no, no. Oh, I'd be at home. <laughs> like, what would you be doing now? You know, drinking whiskey at home, chilling out, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know not eating stuff. cake. No. Um, yeah, uh, another profession. Another profession. Like, if we stripped you of all your stuff that you've learned, mm. what, what other path could you have potentially gone down? Ah, that's interesting. Um, well, I mean, I've done, I've done some different professions as I've, How, gone. as of we all, as of we all, I, I mean, I worked as a mountain guide for a long time. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. And I think the first job I ever did that I really loved was work as a ski instructor. Yeah. Um, and I still have a lot of friends that do that and they have the most fun all winter. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, that was great. It was great fun. That sort of time capsule time doing that. So I think sometimes I look nostalgically back on that sort of thing. Um, I do. I don't know. I think I, I don't. I can't think of anything because I really love what I do. Just, a, a job that you hated. A job that I hated. Um, that's a tie. I can <laughs> that's like boom. Woo! Two two hats <laughs> straight away. Um, I worked as a landscaper for a while. Gard garden. Gardening. Yeah. Gardening. Landscaping. Garden guy. Uh, and I'm not a landscaper. Okay. Kind of guy. <laughs> Um, and I worked with a couple... I love how you solidly know that. I solidly I know solidly that. I solidly know that. Uh, I worked with... Two of the guys I worked with were sort of semi-retired. Or no, they were retired. They were retired farmers from... Retired Southland farmers. They're like Invercargo farmers. Yeah. And they came out of retirement tour for this landscaping company. And I helped them out all day. Um, so I got basically bossed around by... To the two... The, like the Southern men, guys from the Spades commercial. Yeah, yeah. Those were the guys... You wanted to kill them by the end of the day. Okay. Um, so that was pretty tough. So yeah. that, that was that was difficult on one, one level, but I think still take the cake. Um, for about four months, many, many years ago when I was still living in Canada, um, I worked at a pesticide factory. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was I was about to move to the Caribbean. Just another story altogether. <laughs> Um, you are James Bond, that yeah. year. <laughs> I was about to move to the Caribbean. He's gonna whip his glasses off in a minute and go. <laughs> um, but I, I needed to make some money to, to move down there, so I took this job at a working nights at a pesticide factory. Um, We've all done those jobs. And yeah, Ooh. but this was like this was intense. Like I would like fill these big containers with these horrible noxious chemicals for hours at a time, and then uh, I leave the factory floor and I'd walk into this big locker room area and there was two sides of the locker room. There's a dirty side and a clean side. And I'd take off all my work clothes and I'd put them in my dirty locker. And between the two locker rooms was a shower and I was contractually obliged to have a shower to wash the chemicals off of me <laughs> and then put on my clean clothes and go home. And then when I finally quit there, I, I asked, cause I, I had like a pair of hiking boots that, that was like my, work issued hiking boots and I said oh you know could I keep those hiking boots and he said oh no 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 we incinerate all of your equipment after <laughs> you leave um and I, I remember leaving there going wow I'm never ever gonna do that again no but it was a great great kick up the ass to yeah like, you know I, I wanted to do these unorthodox career things that were challenging and yeah it's like, that was like the fire that was lit under me it's like there's always never do that there's again. always a pesticide factory <laughs> I love it. Okay, so now comes time. Da -da -da. We need to create a jingle for this. Uh, we have a little quiz. Oh god. It's not. It's not anything personal. Would it be any long but, vision? No, 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 no. There's no maths involved because I can't do that. Um, so we have. We discovered the other night. We weren't very good at this. The title of the quiz is ground tree or bush. Okay, I'm going to give you a vegetable or fruit. And you have to tell me oh where it comes from. Okay. You see how exciting our lives are in this house? Oh, my God. Okay, are you ready? Yes. So it's ground tree or bush. Now, uh, bush can incorporate vine. Okay. 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 So, cucumber. Uh, you need one of those. Is, I think that's from a bush. It's from a well done. Okay. Broccoli. Uh, the ground? 
Bush. Lychee. A tree. Well done. Orange. A tree. Peas. A bush. Well done. Grapes. Uh, also a bush. Well done. Banana. A tree. Kind of. Uh, I'll give you that one. Potato. Out of ground. Yes. Tomato. Uh... Uh, a bush. Well done. Radish. Do you know what a radish? You know radish. Yes, radish is the same name in two ground, countries. Ground. ground. Yeah. Uh, corn. Or maize, as you may know it. No, it's corn. It's, it's a... What, I guess it would be a bush. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Uh, marrow. Do you have marrow? The long green... Oh, not you see, that could as, be a cross-cultural thing. Not as thing. in, like, the centre of someone's bone. No. Um, the green, the big green. I think a bush. Looks like a cucumber, kind of. You're well done. Spinach. That'd be a bush as well. Well done. Capsicum, known as pepper to our UK mm. contingent. Uh, that would be also a bush. Well done. And parsnip. On the ground. You did very well there. Woo! Well, um, to be fair, I was a vegetarian for 10 years. Well done. <laughs> we were very bad at that game the other night. We were all like, oh my god, I don't even know what that is. Um, <laughs> spinach, what? <laughs> what? What does that come from, what, cow? What's that um, from? Okay, and then to end, uh, in a fight, who would win? Superman or Batman? Uh, Superman. Uh, Brittany or Christina? I ask everyone this. Uh, i got to go Brittany. Okay. Uh, bacon sandwich, brown or red sauce? See, that's very culturally specific. Oh, shut up. Answer the question. Barbecue sauce. Well done. Ba oh, barbecue. You see, that's <laughs> yeah. different from brown sauce to me. It is. Uh, is it Canadian versus the UK? Yeah, there mm. you go. Uh, scones or scones, jam on first and then cream, or cream and then jam? Well, obviously jam and the cream. Oh, you, we like you in this house. You see, I put a little heart next to jam and cream. Yeah. I mean, how do you get? How do you put, how do you put jam on the cream? It's just a disaster. Don't know. Um, and then one, this time, one album that you would listen to forever and ever on an island. One album. That's a really hard question. I know. Um, <laughs> That's I'm gonna why. I'm going to deflect the question. Oh, here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk for a while about other things. Um... Music is really important. We know that. I listen to music all day, yes. every day. I, I have the luxury of having my own office without someone saying, turn down the music. Yeah. Um, this is quick fire. He ain't good at this. No. I'm, I'm, <laughs> one album. One album. Can I pick a few? No, you're allowed one. Damn you're on an island, you shipwreck there forever, and the boat with the boxes comes in, and there's an album. What would it be? Right. One album. Um, maybe, maybe Pearl Jam Versus, second album from Ooh, them. Controversial. Controversial. I'm not sure why. Uh, no, that's it. You only get I one. That's only get one. Yeah, you get one I opportunity. Get one. Um, I guess so. That's it? I, we, uh, well, I could, I could think of like 10, like Weezer Blue. No, no was cool. we knew Weezer would be in there. Oh, God. On, Pearl Jam it is. Right. Scott Kennedy, this is your life. That's it. Da, 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 da. You can clap now. <laughs>